Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. So Takuma Anue, the 28-year-old younger brother of Anoya Anue, defends his WBA bantamweight championship and keeps it in the family, basically, because all those bantamweight belts belong to his older brother. Um, he picked up one of them when they went up in the air, and he defended it against Jerwin Ankahas, who uh, got knocked out with uh, body punches in the ninth round. And if you look at Takuma Anue, I mean, he... He's got that typical Japanese style, box fighting, can be aggressive, but doesn't take any risks, um, ho always holds his shape, always tries to control the range initially, and then once once he's got the range, he might move forward. But if there's if there's a lot coming back at him, he'll he's quite happy to box on the back foot. He doesn't have his brother's power. Uh, he moved to 19 wins, one defeat, no draws, but he's only got five KOs. Um and I've got to be honest, I was surprised he stopped Jerwin Ankahas because the Filipino had lost two of his last three. Uh, so you could say he was a bit lucky to get this title shot. But they were to two undefeated guys, um, Fernando Martinez and, and... In fact, no, they were both. They were both against the same guy, Fernando Martinez. He lost two decisions. So this was for the IBF uh, super flyweight title. Um, and... To be honest with you, he, I mean, he came in with a reputation for being a tough guy. He, he, you know, he's got a couple of draws on his record. Um, and one of those was over 12 rounds. So he's used to doing that 12 round distance. Um, 23 of his 34 wins have been stoppages. Coming in, he had three defeats. They were all on points. Um, and I thought this had distance written all over it, 12 round distance. I thought Anue would win. But I did not expect him to knock out Anka House, certainly not with body punches. And <clears throat> to be honest with you, it came out of the blue. It was in the ninth round. Um, a new way landed. Let me get this right now, because he landed, I think it was a I think it was a right to the what looked like the solar plexus. Um Anka House and Anue at this point were locking horns, and then he followed it with a left to possibly the liver. Left up to the liver. Um, Anue, by the way, is, is um, a conventional um, orthodox fighter, whereas Ankahas was uh, or is um, Southpaw. And it looked to me like <clears throat> Ankahas was on the ascendancy because he was drawing Anue into his fight. Like for the first three rounds, um, Maybe four. Anue was was boxing, like I say, boxing <clears throat> not on the back foot, but boxing quite conservatively, looking to land the punches as and when the opportunity arose, working for the for the openings. Ankahas a bit more crude is the wrong word, but a bit more um, a bit more cavalier, a bit more front footed, uh, looking to put constant pressure on it in a way. And in I think it was the fourth round, this seemed to be paying dividends because suddenly. Um, Ankahas was landing some good body punches and I thought Anue looked bothered I think it was the fourth or the fifth I'm pretty certain it was the fourth I thought Anue looked bothered because they were, he was really chopping away to the body Ankahas and it seemed that he was dragging Anue into, into that phone booth warfare and Anue was firing back it's not like Anue was being steamrolled no that wasn't the case at all but nevertheless um I don't know whether that was the fourth or fifth round, but certainly by the sixth, Anue had got back on his his uh, got back to his boxing. Probably I don't speak Japanese, but it's probably on the orders of the of the corner, and he started a box very well again. You know, aggressively, but nevertheless, everything was textbook. Everything was conventional. Um, no sort of locking horns, no banging heads. It was all you know, control the distance and box and throw hurtful punches. Then. In the eighth round, the same thing happened as previously. Ankahas started to get closer and was chopping away and was having some success. And you thought, okay, there's, another, there's a third of the fight to go. This is clearly Ankahas' fight. Um, what's going to happen with Anue? Well, in the ninth round, like I say, out of the blue, it was Anue who was the one who chopped down Ankahas with the body punches. And Ankahas just couldn't beat the count. I mean, he was knackered. He was still on the floor a minute after the count had finished. And it was it was a real surprise that the supposedly light hitting Takuma Anue was able to stop the previously unstoppable Jerwin Ankahas. Ankahas is thirty two now, so 
Is, was this the last hurrah? I don't know. Lighter weight sometimes. Yeah, 32 for, an old, for a lighter weight is kind of uh, not old, but not, not, by, not by, by today's standards. Anyway, it used to be 30, 40 years ago. 32 was old for a, for a bantamweight, but not, not really anymore. But it's not young either. But for Anua, you get the feeling uh, that he's coming into his peak years. He's 28 now. And certainly he boxes very, very well. You know, he's a very good box fighter. Um, and despite this body punch knockout, maybe maybe he'll score a few more stoppages with body punches. But punches to the head, he's, he hasn't got many stoppages via punches to the head. I think I think his technique is such that he will get stoppages. But he's, he's the type of guy who will outwork you and is quite content to, you know, to win on points. His one defeat was back in 2019 to Nordin Ogule, who was undefeated at the time. He lost a 12-round decision. That was in Japan. And Ogule was flying at the time, um, then then bumped into Nonito Donaire and got bounced around the ring in four rounds, got knocked out. But there's no doubt that Japanese boxing, I mean, is absolutely flying. Um, and it's entertaining stuff. It really is. I mean, Junto Nak- Nakatani... Uh, beat um, Alejandro Santiago. He stopped him. Um, he, yeah, he, I think I don't think Santiago had been stopped either. But Nakatani stopped him. This was on the same card. Um, Anuwe stops Ankahas and um, Kozai Tanaka uh, wins a unanimous decision over Christian um, Bakasuega. So those are three world title fights, three world titles uh, that in Japanese hands from Superfly to Bantam. This is marvellous stuff in Japan. I mean, they, they are flying. And Eddie Hearn and Matruma, as you may know, have, have hooked up with, I don't know, the, the, name, the name of the organisation escapes me, but it's a Japanese uh, promotional outfit. Oh, can I remember the name of it? Probably, is it one of Mr. Honda's promotional outfits? Taiken Promotions, is it? Is that what it's called? Taiken Promotions? Uh, yeah, I might have that wrong. But anyway, anyway, the point I'm making is that Eddie Hearn and Matchroom have, have I'm going to, I think it is Tycoon Promotions. They've hooked up with them to bring some Japanese cards to DAZN. If you're a DAZN subscriber, do not miss those cards because they are terrific entertainment. The Japanese cards are terrific entertainment. Lots of punches thrown, um, exciting fights, great matchups, real competitive fights. You'd be a mug if you love boxing to ignore the Japanese scene because it's fantastic. Anyway. Well done to um, Inoue Jr. Uh, I don't know how many brothers are there, about three, four. Um, but Takuma defends his title, his WBA bantamweight title. Bad luck to German. Ankahas, maybe he can come again, but we've got plenty more to come from Inoue, I'm sure. Um, and yeah, what did you think of the fight? Comments below, as always. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. you just got to hit the subscribe button, and it helps us. And that little, you know, thumbs up thing, hit that and all, like button, yeah. They count them. I still haven't worked out why, but they count them. Anyway, looking forward to reading your comments and bye for now.